What's going on guys? This is Donovan with Team Tate Outdoors. In today's video, we're gonna be building a dance floor for my son. He's turning 15 and all he asked me for was a dance floor. So I'm gonna make him an eight by eight dance floor for him to practice his break dancing on. If this is something you wanna watch, stay tuned. We're gonna get into it. And I'm gonna show you how to build your own dance floor. Let's do it. So here's some of the products we're gonna need. We're gonna be using this. Ultrabond 373, you're gonna need some wood screws. And I bought plenty because I got a lot more wood to put on here. So you don't have to have this big of a box. This is what we're gonna hook our two by fours together with, some three inch screws. We've got this wood right here that we're gonna make the platform with. And then we also have some vinyl. And you'll see that in a minute but I've got a wood grain vinyl that we're gonna put over the top of it. We got some trim that we're gonna use to trim out the edges. We've got a small stack of two by fours for the framing and for the support on the inside. And with that, let's get started. Our first step is to measure these boards to find out the exact width of them. So that's what we have to frame. We have to frame a 40 by 49 by 97. So what we're gonna actually do, we are going to, uh, I think the best case scenario is for us to trim those boards so that we can fit it exactly on an eight by eight platform. And that's why we have the trim that I bought. Exactly eight feet. I forgot. I need three inches off of these. Total. What was I thinking? Got the first one done. We are missing one board because I didn't add the seventh board because the outsides. We'll go cut that now and we'll put it in. All right, these boards are just a little bit bigger than eight foot, which is actually better because when you try to buy boards that are eight foot, most of them are actually just a tad smaller. This one's a tad bigger. I want this thing to be perfectly eight foot. We have it perfectly squared. We're gonna go ahead and run a chalk line, mark our, uh, actually just a T-square, and mark our, our two by four. We're gonna get it screwed down. To ensure that my wood does not split or splinter or buckle up or, or 
break, I'm going to drill some very thin, small pilot holes to get some of the wood out of there. So when I put my screws in, they'll hold tight. So we're gonna go ahead and drill very thin pilot holes. We just got done screwing it all down. So the next step, we got to clean this thing off, make sure don't, there's no dust or anything like that on it. All right. All right, guys. Now it's time to move on to the glue. Got the glue, just got the lid off of it. I'm gonna start from the center and I'm gonna move out to the edges. That stuff looks like um, vanilla bean uh, creme caramel or something. It looks yummy, actually. All right, so we switched over to paint brushes to level it out. That was my idea. <laughs> Because it was her idea. <laughs> it was my idea from the start. You said no. Start pushing all the air bubbles out as I smooth it over. Okay, guys, so now got it all smoothed out. Now we're just gonna trim it. Dad, you're sweaty. All right, next thing we're gonna do before we cut it, we're gonna lay some weight on it. We make sure that glue adheres evenly. All right, Ellie, let's go get one more. Okay. All right. All we're doing right now is just adding as much weight evenly distributed so that glue can press down. So the next step is to trim all this off. All right, now that I've trimmed it, I'm gonna take these boards off. We've stood on this for a while, and the girls have. Now we're gonna move on to the trim portion, putting trim around the edge. Now what I've got, I've got my Stanley stapler with um, finishing little brad nails. I'm gonna, I went ahead and cut my, my trim at 45 degree angles 
and for this specific application with the trim extended over the edge a quarter of an inch on both sides then cut that corner as long as it's extended a quarter of an inch then it will line up properly so we're going to go ahead and put all this trim on and uh, then we'll get back to painting it Now I'm just coming through and filling up with some wood with some wood glue or some wood filler all the little brad nail spots so we don't have any indentions in it when we paint it. Alright guys, day two. I'm in this room because they're playing music inside. I don't want the music to be on the video. Day two, working on the dance floor. Ellie and I are fixing to get started painting this. Well, first we're going to primer it. Then we're going to use an exterior black uh, exterior paint, a storm proof paint, just because I already had that on hand. Then we're going to paint the trim with a blue color. So we're going to get into a time lapse of painting this thing. Let's see if we can't finish it today. All right, well me and Ellie are finished with the priming of it. Now we're gonna move on, we've let it dry for about an hour. We're gonna move on to the trim and Ellie's gonna paint all of our trim. And we have this really pretty blue color. So we're gonna paint it blue. You ready, Ellie? So last and final coat is black. We're gonna go ahead and start applying that now. And then we'll be able to take off this tape and reveal what we've actually done. So we're gonna finish this uh, coat, coat right now. All right, well, I am tired. My wife is finally home from work. Sun's setting, it's getting dark, and um, we're gonna let that thing dry overnight and then we'll Peel the tape off tomorrow, revealing all of our hard work and see if we taped it off properly and see if it looks good. And uh, so, let's get over there to the next morning. I'm gonna go eat some dinner. All right, guys, there it is. We got her cleaned up. She's ready to bust the moon. Yes. <laughs> 